I like to refer to it as a, a studio audience conversation today. Um, we speak where we want to go. So yes, tonight will be a studio audience um, conversation. We, and um, we will be talking about, so the scripture that the Lord put on our hearts for today is in Hebrews. So let me, let me speak about that and then we will continue. It's Hebrews 10, 24 to 25. And it says, let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. What the Lord is telling us is the importance of community. And today's conversation um, is anchored by how does the lack of community or does it in any way affect us as believers when we live abroad or when we move abroad? Does the lack of community affect us in any way at all? And if it does, how? And if it doesn't, why do we say so? So we'll start the conversation and living abroad, um, when I check to live abroad or to live anywhere, is when you've been in that place for six months plus, it is considered that you've lived there. So because this is a studio audience or an open house conversation tonight, anybody who has spent more than six months out of their home country is considered as having lived abroad. So I believe that um, a lot of us will have something to share on that. And um, it may not be you directly, it could be your spouse, it could be your child, it could be your family member, but our conversation tonight is how the lack of community affects us when we have to move abroad. Does it affect our faith? Does it affect the covenants we make with the Lord? Does it affect our language, the way we speak? And does it affect our social activities? I believe that as we have this conversation, the Lord will bring um, a lot more up. So to join me, um, steer this conversation with the help of the Holy Spirit, because this is his program. We have my dear sister, Jewel. We have my sister, Joyce. And um, okay, so this Corey Day is not here. But like I said, it's an open house or a studio audience conversation. So anybody who feels um, led to share, please just raise your hand up and we would talk about it together. It's going to be a conversation. So please feel free. Sister Joel and Sister Joyce, are you with me? Yes. Okay, awesome, awesome, Sister Joyce. Thank you. Thank you so much. So we'll start our conversation on whether the mind of um, whether living uh, lacking a community affects us in any way as believers when we move abroad, and um, I, I will share. I will start by sharing, and then we'll pick it up from there. I, I remember that um, when we were growing up, there there was a young lady who I know, and um, she had to move abroad for school, and by the time she became a woman. Somehow, somehow her, her faith or her belief in Jesus Christ had shifted from where it originally was before she moved abroad. I don't know whether it was a lack of community, but as I, I put this out here, I'd like to hear what you think. Do we think that a lack of community affects how we believe as, as Christians? Um, Sister Joyce, if you could add on, and I believe sisters will join in once we kickstart the conversation. Um, maybe let me just speak from my own experience. Um, yeah. So I I moved away from home and went to live in another country. By the time that I was, I think yeah, I was nine years old. So I moved for for educational purposes to another country. And but what I can say that helped me to sustain my faith at that time, at that young age, actually, was more of my, my, my parents back home. Yeah. So their prayers, mm. the regular contact, in as much as I was in a foreign place, by just remembering how 
you know, it was praying at a certain time, maybe before going to sleep, that helped me. Okay, then I would remember, okay, then I need to pray. This is what dad taught me. This is what mom says that I should do. So that helped me to to at least sustain me for, for, for a good number of years. And then the regular going back, that fellowship. So at least I was I was not there like for a really long time. There were times that at the end of the term you go back home. Okay. So that going back home and being plugged into that community um of fellowshipping, it helped me to continue to yeah. to grow in faith. That's what I can say. But yes, when you when you're out there and okay, there's no mm -hmm. mom or dad to pray with you, then it's something that you need to remember by yourself as a child. Um, and then, how can I say? That came to an end, primary school ended. I went back home. Um, then I went to secondary school again. I was, I was not in my home country. I was still living away from home. So it was still the back and forth. I was still, I, I, I can say the foundation that my parents laid for me is what helped, helped to sustain my faith. But then they get to a point where you now need to make your own personal choice. Because, I mean, eventually you have to, you say, you, you get out of the nest and you decide, okay, which what, what do I choose? Am I going to stick with the faith that I've been brought up with? Or am I going to now start venturing into something new? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Um, I, I did I did not experiment as such, um, trying different churches as such, because I was always thinking to myself, okay, now if I join that, am I going to be okay um, with with how they pray maybe or how they worship will it resonate with with what what the spirit is is leading me to or or how i was brought up with in worshiping so i would go back let me say back to to reading the bible i think that that helped me a lot just being out there, but going back to, to reading the scriptures, even if it was the same one and I would be repeating it over and over to myself. At least, you know, I've memorized this. I know that I'm walking into this place and, the, you know, I'm surrounded by mostly non-believers, but how, how do I want to continue to live? That now there's, you know, there's the dating scene. Uh, that was when, I'm, you know, when you're in university now. There's going out. There's, uh, there's, there's a party here. There's a party there. Uh, how, how, how do I feel that? Like, do I feel left out or do I want to go with the crowd? When I look back now at, the, at, at that point in time, I would say that, I was, I've always been, okay, I've, I've been more or less an introvert. So being, going out there was always very difficult for me. So maybe I could say I had it easier that I would, you know, stay stay behind and read more of the word. And the, I, I remember there would be times where I would have my own vigil at night <laughs> when people are out. So I'm the only one maybe left in my dorm. And I would put on some gospel music maybe and I'd tell myself, okay, I'm going to start praying maybe tonight from nine maybe until midnight. And then after that, I'd go to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And then, you, of course, there are those people who would come and they would, oh, you know, what, what's wrong with you? Why, why are you always just staying, staying behind? Come out, let's, you know, let's go out there. Let's, you know, let's see how that, how, how it will, you know, let's see the other side of life. So, okay, I had those times when I would go out. Uh, yeah, like, you know, it was fun and just 
being out there with the music and dancing with friends and such. But then there would always be that part of me to get to a certain point at night and I'd think, I don't think this is where I'm, I'm supposed to be. <laughs> let, me, let me rush back. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I, I would go yeah. back. And God has been faithful in that way that even if, you know, I would want to cross maybe the boundaries or something, or even if I did, he would always bring me back. Mm. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Sister Joyce, for kickstarting that um, for us, because as you shared, I can, I can, um, and I'm sure our sisters can also hear and identify with that, that, you know, the lack of community, yes, it does make a difference in, in our faith. However, the community not, must not necessarily be physical, because in your case, it was a remote community, the remote community of your parents. And, and, and still, that was having the effect. Um, and, and that I find very fascinating. You know, of course, we know that God is not bound to a physical location. But the fact that even the remote community that you had with your parents or in your parents really helped you to stay grounded. And, and um, that is really um, worth noting and important to note. So sisters who just joined us today, we are ha having an open studio audience, studio conversation or studio audience, any way we put it, on, on the mind of Christ and um, community and moving abroad. That when we move abroad, does not having a community or the lack of community have any effect on our faith, or, or the way we speak, or on our social activities, how important is it to have a community when you move abroad? And we are doing that by sharing experiences. It doesn't have to be your own experience. It could be the experience that you witnessed of somebody who's close to you and how maybe it affected you. So that is how the conversation is going to go tonight. You know, and um, Sister Joyce, when you shared about, about um, hanging out and coming back, it reminded me of myself and, um, going out to the club and sitting on the, on the speakers and sleeping. Because of peer pressure, I'll follow them and go, and then I'll sit on the speakers and sleep. And that reminded me of that. You know, when the seed is sown, it, it, um, it is always there. It is, no matter how far you drift, you know, you always come back. So, um, yeah, thank you. Yeah. And um, sisters, um, before we, we um, move on to, to our Sister Jewel, to also chip in with the question. Sister Jewel, as we are sharing, if you if you can chip in with any questions or something that comes to mind, that would be very welcome so that we get different perspectives um, to this conversation. Is there any other sister, before we go back to Sister Joyce, um, who would like to share with us on their experience with not having a community when they moved abroad? I see my dear sister Corrida is here. I see lots of my other sisters. I see Sister Emily, I see Sister Fiona, Sister Karen. Oh, all my sisters are here um, that I know have lived abroad. I'm sure there are others that I don't know. Ah, Sister Yad, and I yeah, is here, Sister Viv. Um, I don't know about Sister Sophie, Sister Rosie, and Sister Rita's experience, but sisters, we are sharing. So please jump in and, and let's share. Sister Emily, please go ahead. Hello. Hi. Uh, <laughs> I, I I would say that in terms of community, when I um, moved outside of my country of birth, um, it was it was a bit difficult because when when even when we went to church, the the way they did church was different, and mm. um, that was a bit. So you feel like well, it, well <laughs> the church that we went to in, um, back home and the church that w we went to in the, uh, where, where I moved to, um, yeah, it was completely different. So where I perhaps naturally would have been inclined to have reacted in a certain way, I, I realized if I did it, I realized I was looked at in a strange way. So then I, I had to sit on those reactions and try to conform that's what I felt. I felt like I had to conform to what was um, uh, going on around me. And also, um, I was quickly told that in conversations and stuff, you don't bring up things like religion, politics and stuff, which was different mm -hmm. to 
where I came from, um, conversation is generally around religion. Uh, mostly you can talk about religion, but um, I was told that that wasn't um, the thing to do. So again, you find that you, you're not asking whether are you a Christian. It's almost like it's an offensive thing to ask, oh, are you a Christian? Or, you know, um, do you believe in God or whatever? Um, having said that, there, there are deviations to the norm in my experience, but in general, you wouldn't you wouldn't expect to um, talk to be able to talk about your faith freely unless of course you've struck a relationship with the person and then you can kind of ease yourself into that mm. sort of thing so that's been my experience yeah yes, Emily, thank you for bringing that into into the conversation because um yeah it is something worth we take it for granted over here when you can just you know <laughs> talk about even here i think things are changing right but we take it for granted i believe a few times when we can just um, tout or, or go around proudly displaying what we believe without um, fear or favor. Um, that, that's very interesting as well. Um, I, I see how, how that also could easily um, shift one's, one's um, heart position. If you're not firmly grounded in the Lord, you know, when you move abroad and all of a sudden things are so different and um, you, you are thinking, hey, what do I what do I do? How do I, you know, um fit in here? Or do I just go with the norm in quotes where everybody is, is away from this kind of setting? So thanks for throwing that in. Um sisters, we are having a conversation, a family conversation, a studio audience conversation on the mind of Christ and living abroad, um, and the lack of community and whether it affects our faith or not, whether it affects the way we speak or not whether it affects the social activities that we attend or not. So Joel, if you can kindly please put the, the points in the chat so that if a sister um, forgets, then they can please look at it. I see a lot of my sisters on here who I know have lived abroad. I'm sure there are any more who I'm not aware of. So please jump in and, and, and share your experience with that. And I believe somebody will be blessed. It could be your child who moved abroad. How did they fit in? With community or without community and um, how did that affect what they believe you know because we we, we believe that um, yes sister Viv, please go ahead thank you hello good evening this is how are you um i'm good <laughs> we thank god um so i just want to share very quickly so um when um we first relocated to the uk my mom was here so and she already was in church um a local church not the one we were in, like attending in Ghana but I think when we came there were a lot of young people so well I have two younger brothers but and I'm the oldest um I found myself I just integrated into the church um setting and um um I've always since then found myself in the house of God and it's been a natural instinct this is a second like it's first nature let me put it that way to just be in the things of God so um I want to read this scripture um and it's from first Corinthians 15 33 and it says do not be misled bad company corrupts good character and um I think the association that we find ourselves in can easily influence so like my brother who comes after me, he's someone who's a prayer topic because I find that the company that he found himself in hasn't helped him. Mm -hmm. um, even though literally raised in the same directions, look, okay, let's all go to church. I find that he wouldn't want to do that. He, he's very, he's a bit of an introvert. So he turned to just kind of keep to himself, but then would unfortunately be influenced by, the bad crowd and so as opposed to say okay I'll still be my introvert self but in the house of God it went the opposite way um but I found that the community in the house of God helped so even when I was doing something that it, like as I grew up and something that was out of line with God I would always feel that conviction um you kind of feel that judgment at the back of your head that's going to come to you even though like you know we're not supposed to be judging like that but we know within the church it's like okay like you know you get that trouble like hey this person I didn't expect that from you know this girl so that keeps you like 
corrected somewhat but I think my brother not having that probably go and finish your food I'm coming yeah sorry um <laughs> <laughs> she's obsessed with ban- she's obsessed with bandages <laughs> don't mind I put that on camera that would have been so cute <laughs> this one um but yeah so I think that community in the house of God and in church I found that it helped me and um one thing about me is um I'm very as much as I'm very sanguine and very out there I'm very anti-conformist so if there was something that didn't sit right with me I wouldn't gravitate towards so like the clubbing scenes was something that I never I never gravitated towards um and that that helped so the sense of community does make a difference and I'll give an example like here in the UK you have a lot of Indian communities the Sikh community and they come together, and they grow together, and you see that community, like, the individuals are thriving, because they do stand together as one, and with that, you see the influences that comes with that, and I think in our Christian walk as well, we can always get that if we stand together as one, I think there's no division in Christ, we're all one, and if we see that in that way, irrespective of denominations, or whatever, I think last time, one of the, I think last week's session, um, Sister, um, if I said um, Christ doesn't, God doesn't know um, denomination. I think when she was talking about being called, yeah. um, yes. and that's the truth. So we're all one in Christ. I think if we get that concept right, we will start forming that community, irrespective of what church we go to, what denomination, like what we are doing here right now. And I think that fosters that spirit in the kids. Um, recently, I think after COVID, I wasn't going into church much. And um, I think when I started, I've seen a big difference within my children, like in terms of their, even their, the joy that they find on a daily, on a weekly basis, they're uplifted. So from my personal experience, yes, community does work. And I think knowing God for yourself, eventually it starts feeding into it. So whilst you're in the process of, you know, knowing God through the wider community, you need to start getting that conviction of knowing God for yourself and I think once that happens um you that's it you don't you don't you need the community don't get it wrong but you know God for yourself that you understand the importance of it Genesis and you just understand the importance of it as opposed to needing it to keep your faith alive you you got that faith and you're using like you use that to just keep the community going I think that's probably what how it works in reverse but um I think I'll leave with this scripture um in Romans which talks about do not conform to the things of this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you'll be able to test and approve the good and perfect will of God and I think when I discovered that scripture it became my all-time favorite because I as I said I'm very anti-conformist and knowing that I don't, you know, sub- succumb to, you know, influences has helped me with my faith up to today. And I'm grateful to God for that. And I think we can learn to adopt that culture of not going into the world, but going into um, like our Christian walk. And um, I think that would be a blessing to all of us and our children as well. So that's my two cents. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you too, Sister Babe. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and, and again, we see, you know, parents playing that role of the initial community that she she had to walk into when she moved abroad first. And, and so if we're parents here and, and we, we have our children moving abroad or coming to join us abroad, we have to have this kind of um, mind of Christ in mind where we, we create that community for our children. So we've seen a lot of instances um, up to now, we've seen the remote um, kind where people, um, a sister's community were, was her parents who were far away. And we've seen how church itself can can be a lack of community because when Sister Emily was sharing, she could have gone on the other side where, you know, the difference in church alone could have created a sense of lack of community because it's so different, you know, so that alone could have been a challenge. So those are very interesting points. And then with our sister Viv, she shared with us also how, her parents created that community for her initially, and then she, she joined the church. So thanks for, for the various perspectives, Sister Sam. The Lord is speaking to us. Sister Rosie, then Sister Rita. 
And sisters, um, if you are able to and you feel like, you can turn on your camera, it's up to you entirely. But you know how Mind of Christ likes cameras. So if you're able to and you feel like, please do. Otherwise, <laughs> let's just flow. Sister Rosie, go ahead. Oh, hi, everybody. Yeah, um, I, I, can, I can relate to what uh, Sister Viv just said. You know, very, very much about me, knowing God for yourself. Because um, when I came to, you know, like, you know, like, like I came, I moved from Ghana to join my dad here. You know, my dad and my mom wasn't married, you know, so I came and joined my dad and my stepmom. And um, although, I mean, back home, I was raised as a Methodist, you know, go to church, you know, uh, we even go what they call class every Saturday, I think. You know, I think my stepdad was a, a class leader. So, and I went to Methodist yeah. school as well. You know, so although I wasn't like born again, I was like a church go goer. Like I wasn't born again. I didn't even understand what, you know, into that. I was fully like a Methodist thing. You know, didn't go to SU or anything. But for some reason, there was something in me you know, which I know that there's God there. You know, there's somebody higher than that. I joined my father here and I was very surprised that my dad, oh, my dad and my stepmother, they didn't go church and you not even allowed to talk about church or anything. And everything was so strange to me, you know, especially my stepdad. I don't know what she believed in. And it was like, no way. You will, you. I can say like, oh, Sunday, you know, can I go church? Can I visit? You know, because there was, I think there was, there was, um, what's it called? Um, I've forgotten the church, not far from us, you know. And I one day asked my dad if I could go to the church and, like, oh God, <laughs> you know. Anyway, to cut a long story, I lived with my dad for about two years. I moved out, but luckily, within five years being in the country, I got married. So I was like a mature person myself. And just before I got married, I found like a Methodist church. I was very independent. You know, I didn't have anybody to like dictate to me, you know, um, I have my own mind what I needed to do. And then that was it. And I started going church. I started going to Methodist. I had my kids, you know, and then raised them in church. They also love God, you know, raised them. I think I think it was all what was instilled in me, you know, before I moved to this country. But um, in this country, I realized, I live in the UK anyway, I realized that if you're not strong, you can easily be influenced and do bad things, you know. And um, what sister, I think sister Emily said, you know, you can't even discuss religion or faith or anything to anywhere even at workplace or like everything and you find it very very I find it very very strange you know but thank God that you know there was something in me the love of God and everything and so I found my own way and did what you know up till now and I'm glad that you know all my kids are born again they've all had water baptism, they love God, they won't miss church on Sunday, you know, and when I sit back and look back, I said, you know, it's very, very strange. And my two brothers that were born in this country, because the way my dad and my stepdad brought them up, you know, one ended up in prison, you know, the other one took his life, which is very unfortunate though, because there was so much going back. You know, my dad had four kids, you know, the two of us were born in Ghana and we were brought here. We were very, very, very different from the ones that were born here. So I had all this in mind. So I was very, very, very careful how to raise my kids and how how to even expose, where to expose them and like what, you know, because looking at my brothers and my, the, I mean, you know, his past and gone, you know, you know, like a blessed memory is back. Nothing, you know, I'm not saying anything bad, like, you know, but this is the way it is and you cannot change a person, you know, which is sad though. But um, yeah, 
you know, moving if you don't if you don't have um and unfortunately, I mean, although although my dad my I was raised in a church, you know, I can I I I never remember my mom even praying for me. <laughs> we went to church, we went to class, you know. I've never remembered my mom laying her hands or my stepdad laying her hands, his hands on me or any of my you know, sisters, you know, praying for us, you know, so mm -hmm. everything, when I look back, everything is so strange, like my kids here, even when they're not well, my younger one, no way you would not even put your hand on them, you know, they won't get it on their birthday, when you give them a birthday card or something, you need to put a scripture on it and take the Bible and read it for them, you know, so it's very, 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 um, it's very, very strange, and it's all to do about individual, you know, you and individual for knowing God by yourself, you know. So this is all I have. I want to share. Oh, thank, thank you. you, thank you, Ms. Rizzi. Thank you so much for sharing that and for blessing us with your experience. God bless you. And you know, sisters, as she shared about knowing God for yourself, I, I see how she's creating that community for her children. You know, mm -hmm. as she knew God for herself, so she. Was, she did not stray, thanks to God, but she's created that community for her own children. And so her children now don't lack the community, the right community within which they would also grow in the Lord. I trust that we are all picking up the various tips that our sisters are sharing from the experience. Sister Rita, I haven't forgotten you. I saw your hand and I saw your comments too. So Mina, I meant to call you already. If you are there, please go ahead and share. <laughs> Yes, I'm here. Good um, evening, sisters. I mean, I'm not really going to say anything different from what sisters have shared, but as we learned in one of our studies that by the month of two or three, a testimony is established. So I'm just to affirm what has been shared already. Needing a community abroad. Hmm. In my own perspective, um, like I said, it's, it's a must. It is a must because you know the cultural differences. I mean, so many things, so many things, so many things. But I will start from one, as it has been said again, foundations and convictions. Mm -hmm. Your foundation and your conviction. I remember <laughs> once I, I at the church we fellowship, you know, they believe and um the the science the technology you know all the healing and all that comes from there i mean from god and those things no so i remember one day my my husband and i he said hey if you were to believe in northern parts of ghana and you are you've been bitten by some serious mosquito and there's no hospital then you will learn faith to pray for god's healing you know <laughs> because yeah. how will you let it go in there but you know i mean the yeah. culture and you know and all that so it's the foundation and your convictions and that is why most of we are being admonished not to all, always be going to God for tea and bread. Because if mm -hmm. the reason why you are seeking God is for tea and bread, mm -hmm. in this country and this part of the world, the tea and bread is in abundance. You just need to work. You get it. Put in the hard work. We, we, don't, we have to cry on to God sometimes for daily provision. But the system and the, you know, the way things are put in place. So it's, it's, it's designed in such a way that you really wouldn't need to rely on God. So if you don't have that foundation and your own personal convictions built before entering, um, it will it will take grace. It will take grace. I mean, a lot of people easily let go. You know, you you just make it. I mean, what again? You you is it the money or the building? What you just make it. So you you just you just let let it go like that. So it's very very important for the foundation and the convictions. And even with the community within, you will find yourself, as sister said, our own example, the, where we fellowship currently, we don't speak in tongues, but we've been speaking in tongues from Ghana since we came. So when we go to church, mute, you know, and we don't like the, we don't look down upon that because they, do, they believe in the Holy Spirit, but you know, we are different parts of the, bo um, the body of Christ. Maybe they are the leg, they are the nail, they are the nose, they are the that. You know, say that because I am the tie, you are important than that one. They don't clap. You know, you go to church, you have they have, you have to serve coffee and eat before because some of them have health conditions and, you know, 
and you know, we don't dance. I remember one time we went for a convention and they were singing a cappella and come and see me. I was just clapping and moving my body. It was out of state. We came and one of the elders announced it at church that, oh, Rita went Pentecostal and I was so shy. <laughs> Oh, wow. I was so shy because we just sing hymns, no clapping, you know, all those things. And even when we pray, you know, you pray and you say amen in Jesus' name. Mm -mm. Once the person finishes, we don't even say amen. Everybody knows that the person is done praying and we keep moving. So all these things, but how do we get it going? Because again, as our sisters have shared, like you don't look down upon that. But if you also don't build upon your faith, you, you will become cold. You will become cold. You will become cold. So fellowship with others back home. Practically, that is what we do. We will go to church. All right. I mean, they are lovely people and all that. But I said the, the other side, right? So we connect with church back home. There is CWW, Koinonia. I mean, other fellowships, you can join on YouTube and keep, keep it um, going. So even if you are at a place that um, it is difficult to talk, talk about your faith at all, at all or you can't even share your faith with anyone you don't even have anywhere to go on that there, there is technology there is youtube there is wi-fi i mean wi-fi in these countries are easy to assess than um our homeland ghana you just connect online and join others so that you can sharpen each other and be encouraged by each other but if you also say that because there's not, that community is not there so you are just sitting there you, you become cold you become good. Even the ones that you find yourself in that you get it going. It will take grace to keep you going. You know, sometimes you have to act like the beings. You you go to the church to hear the word, but when you come, you have to see it. You know, again, I'll point it back to foundations and your convictions. And once um the Lord helps us to keep that going and 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 we, we keep going. So yes, we really, we need a community, but the community doesn't necessarily have to be at where you are. You can connect online. I mean, CWW 24 seven, something is going on. So you can, you can even connect online. So that will be my add up to what has been shared already. Thank you. Sister Rita, thank you so much. God bless you for sharing that. Thank you so much. And also for throwing it in um, that if, if you are in a place where you're lacking community, in this, in this world and in this space and today in 2024, you are not lacking community really because you can connect remotely as all of our sisters have also retreated. God bless you for making that clear as well. Sister Nanaya, thank you. Please go ahead. God has been so good. Um, so I've been here probably 25 years or more. And um, um, thinking about um, when I came and how difficult things were. And for, for, for years, I used to go back every time because I thought I needed a Ghana fix, you know, so that I could, I could stay <laughs> back. Um, um, because um, <laughs> the first church I went to was charismatic, but very interesting. And then um, I went to a normal local church, which was also completely dead i think the last the last speaker um um was almost talking about my church but not not quite it's better than my my old church so i did that one for a bit but i had to find um other places where i could fellowship as in maybe go for bible study here or stuff but honestly i think i was i was in the doldrums for a good many years so probably when covid hit and COVID um, helped open up so much for me. I am so grateful. Oh, to be fair, let me go back. Actually, it wasn't before COVID hit. It was um, life circumstances that took me to my current church. And although they don't um, speak in tongues like the other person is speaking about, um, um, if we sing a song that is really touching my heart, I just stand there and I speak in my tongues or by myself, um, in, um, but um, under my breath because I'm sure if even I spoke in my local dialects, they won't have a clue anyway. So um um um, um I would, still be tongues. <laughs> yeah, so I, I would I would just do my there will still it will still be tongues for sure. I'll do that. 
um, um, what I have, I've had in my current church is the freedom to actually raise my hands when we are singing and praise God, because a few of the white people actually do that, lift their hands in praise. So that mm-hmm. has been something that I have enjoyed being having the freedom to do that. Sometimes I want to go on my knees, but I can see that um, uh, this one doesn't happen around here. And so I just have to enjoy my um, lifting my hand, hands up. But COVID was was a great, great thing. Um, COVID opened so much to me. So the first one I did was to join a church which made me meet Rosemary, um, Sister Rosie, who just spoke. And mm. um, it was an online church. And um, God needed to teach me some things over there. So he did and moved me on. And, mm. and then um, um, Lena introduced me to CWW. And that was it. It was, um, um, I was so grateful because Zoom opened up so much for me. And so the lack of community here um, 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 around me in terms of finding people who can do everything I am used to, speak in tongues, go on their knees, um, um, do whatever they want to do um, in a church setting. The lack of having that, um, actually um, having CWW, has has opened that up for me and now i've got so many sisters in london that i now know that i can i can i can meet up with and i didn't have that um because the communities that i got used to were the school communities and the school communities were not geared to do christian things so they'll say oh girls oh this oh that but all they cared about was uh, meeting up to drink, to dance, dinner dance, do all sorts of ridiculous things. So I became very isolated because I didn't want to do any of that. So now I have the freedom and the joy to do all these things. And 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 I am grateful to God for, for that. Um, um, although I would say um, my church probably are not tongue speaking they are they are preach the word sort of people so in fact i have grown more in my knowledge of the bible and god's word more than i did in ghana so i understand deeply extremely deeply um um god's word um 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 (laughs) the number of bible books i have done in my church because we go through a book a, a term or something like that that I have gone through and and therefore how it has developed my Bible study skills is phenomenal and 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 sometimes I hear people quote things and sometimes when they quote and they say things I, I smile because I go okay I know the root word of this and this and this and this and the context of that and that and that and, and all sorts go on in, in my head and 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 I'm grateful to God for that I don't think I would have got that deep knowledge of of say daniel and how daniel is structured and this and that like i have so i'm grateful to god the lack of community has has now helped me to develop something else but now i've got even more community thank god for zoom so thank you i'm thank done you, Nanaya. thank you so much so see that this lack of community can be turned into something positive if we are led by the lord and, and this is really um, interesting as we shared it. Wow. And, and sisters, so if you have a child, if you have a relative, if you have anybody who is moving abroad, there's so much sharing going on here. Or if you're living abroad already and you feel that you lack community and because of that, it's taking you to spaces where you'd rather not be, the Lord is using this session to really enlighten all of us about the many ways that we can find the right community. Um, to be able to thrive in our growth with him. One of our sisters has shared in the chat with me, she says, my daughter says if she's looking for someone with similar morals or values as herself, her daughter is in school, she wouldn't have a single friend. Even those who profess to be Christians seem to have different views on morality where they are in the UK. We need grace. So it's important that we, we create that community for our children and even for us, our sisters, our parents, and our spouses. When we get into the conversation, hopefully um, in the coming weeks of living abroad, um, when your spouse moves abroad or when you move abroad away from your spouse, I believe the Lord will use that to um, teach us even more. So thank you. Um, sisters, we, there's so much more sharing we could share. 
I can see all my Abochua sisters on here. So please, um, by all means, raise your hand and share with us. Raise your hand and share with us, please, so that we can all learn from each other. Yes, Sister Corrie Day. Good evening, everyone. Hi. <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm, I apologize. I'm, I'm kind of jumping into the conversation um, a little late. Um, my, there's been a lot of activity here, um, but I've listened to the last few. I've listened to Sister Rita, I listened to Sister Nanaya, um, and I listened to what you said now about someone whose child is in school. And, you know, I wanted to share a bit about my experience. I've I've lived abroad oh, in, in like several, shall we call them episodes of my life. Mm -hmm. um, so I went to school. I, I, I did university in America and lived in that in, in America for about years. So I remember moving to America. America as a, well, I wasn't a young teenager. I was, I was 19 or so. Yeah, I was 19. Um, and I moved with my sister. And um, we both, we were living with my uncle. So it wasn't like we knew no one. But apart from my uncle and his friends, we knew no one of our age. And we started going to school. And we knew no one that looked like us, no one that was like us. We, had, we knew no one. Our, our classmates were from all over the world. And but no Nigerians, no 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 the African Americans, but no Nigerians, nobody that we knew. And I had spent prior to moving to America, I had spent two years in university in Lagos, mm -hmm. and um, it was a very very different, it was a vastly different experience. And I had the hardest time settling down. Mm -hmm. I remember after about six months or so. My sister, my younger than I am, she asked me one day, for how long are you going to cry now? It's okay. You've been crying for six months now. Nothing has changed. Maybe you should try and do something else because every day, every day, I'll be telling you sorry. And you will just keep crying because it was, I could not, it, it was out of me. If I, if I had means, the only thing that stopped me was the means. If I had means, I would have gone back home. There was nothing, you know, I couldn't, I wasn't dealing with it very well at all. And thus, it. I think of all of us who moved at that, because eventually my other sister came and my cousins came, of all of us who moved, I was the one who had the hardest time settling because there was no one who looked like me. All my friends that I'd had for so long were all in Lagos and calling was expensive. There was no Zoom, there was no Skype. I, there was no FaceTime, there was no nothing. So, you know, it was unreal how isolating that it felt. But, you know, the weird thing was eventually, after about two years, it took me a while, I joined this Christian sorority and it was amazing. It was as if a door just opened. This sorority had existed. I'd kind of noticed them, but I never felt the courage to join or to go up to them. But um, I joined one day. I went with my cousin, and it was just like, wow. And there were young Black women like myself. And, you know, we all had similar beliefs. We had so much in common. And those were the bedrock of my friends. Those are the people I now eventually became friends with and formed relationships with and went to weddings and, you know, we're all still in touch and all of that. So you will eventually find, <laughs> even though it may seem very bleak, you, I find that children, I've, and I feel like the younger, the better, they will find, um, they'll find a way, they will find community, they will fit eventually. Um, with support and what really helped me was I'd had such a because at the time when I moved I was still a very young Christian very very young I think at that time I'd been born again maybe two years a year and a half and so but I was very clear about what I was not going to do so yes mm -hmm. I was in this you know it was like living in a movie at some point you know you see all the boys and all of the and my mom is very far away she can't stop me. so it wasn't like my mom yeah. was there but I had I had a very strong 
about what I was going to do and what I was not going to do. And my faith really, really helped me to stay the course until I found the place where I could call, yeah, these are my people. These are the, these are the ones I can hang out with. These are the ones I can do stuff with. Because there were many opportunities to make friendships um, and form relationships. Oh, I can't even talk about that. But yeah, with other with people outside of my faith, but um, the Lord really, really helped me in that sense. So, um, yeah, I thought that was important to share um, for the episode. Now, in my in my second more or my next more recent episode of living, but was now, um, I'm not. I guess I'm not seeking community the way I did before. In this second go around, everyone was a bit worried that is it going to take her time again? Is she going to be crying? I was very okay. (laughs) COVID had really helped us. It helped me in that it had isolated me and helped me to figure out stuff while I was even still in Lagos. By the time I got here, I wasn't, I was constant. My children already knew my routine. You know, they know that once it's about seven, six, seven o'clock, I'm going to be on Zoom so they can come and they'll talk to me in sign language or write notes to me because I'm, I'm online or whatever, but you know, I I wasn't seeking the, the 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 community that I had sought the first time, the things that I needed mm. to feel okay the first time. This second time around, I was ready, I was prepared. We found it took us a few weeks to find a church. We went into church, and I remember, I think it was Sister Effie that asked me that how was the church today, and my only response was loud. Because oh my goodness, it was intensely loud. I might, but my children loved it. And I was like, oh my gosh, it seems like this is where we are going to go. And so we go there, and I've, I've grown accustomed to the to how loud it is. And then, but I think my daughter sensed that I, it's not necessarily what I would have picked. And she says, why? I said, they don't speak in tongues. And I can feel this, I can tell the peace, the places in the service where you need, where it's so necessary and you can feel the spirit moving but everybody stands up and goes mm, and that was mm, spirit <laughs> you know, so it, it gets very frustrating for me, I will stand <laughs> and I will speak, I will, I will speak I'll lift my hands up, I'll pray, I will kneel down there are times when I'm in the service when the Holy Spirit will speak to me and tell me to go and talk to somebody and share something with that person or whatever I just do what I need to do because, you know, I, I think I'm older and I, I care a lot less um, now than I did before. So um, I just do what I need to do. Uh, and, you know, I have my community online here, my community at yeah. Closer Work, my community in my church from home. We're great. So, um, but I know how isolating it can be. I know how, you know, lonesome it can be. Um, especially like during the winter times when, you know, it's nights by th- by 3.30, it's like nighttime outside, you feel isolated, you feel like nobody's there, you feel really, really bad. But, um, but th- I think the most important thing is if anyone is struggling, reach out. Reach out, we will, there's almost always somebody somewhere who can, you know, connect with you to help you, to hold your hand, mm-hmm. to make you, to help you, you know, gets on your feet. Amen. I think I've talked too much now. Bye. You've talked as much as we needed to and we are happy about it, Sister Corrida. We, we've learned a lot. So thank you. We thank you. It's not too much. It's just what we needed at this time. And so sisters, I'm sure you heard that reach out. If you also are on the side where you feel alone, reach out. I think it's cold now in most places. And, and so reach out. Don't don't sit there alone and suffer alone. Sister Nanekia, please go. And then after you, Sister Fiona. Sister Koyede, God bless you for sharing that. Sister Nanekia. So for me, sorry, my, my voice is gone because I woke up with a, with a cough this morning. I don't know where it came from. After I, I complained about my little girl, I woke up to the end. <laughs> you are healed in the name of Jesus, Sister Nanekia. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for me, I've been living in the UAE for the past eight years. And I will say what helped me was because before I came, I was quite grounded in Christ. Like I knew, you know, I had a deep relationship with God. And so, and I had prayed, like, um, I prayed about my journey. 
So one mm. thing I would say, if you're move, if you're going to move out of out of Ghana, you should pray ahead, like pray prayers ahead of you. Because when I came for about two or three years, I didn't have the chance to go to church. So it was my <laughs> deep relationship with God was what was allowing because where I was working, my day off was one day, but it wasn't on a on a on a Friday at that time. Our day, um, the weekend here was Friday and Saturday. It's changed yes. after COVID to uh, Saturday and Sunday. So at that time. The weekend was Friday and Saturday. And if you are not a senior member in the in the company, you wouldn't get a weekend off. So when I came, I couldn't have a weekend off to go to church. It, it rarely ever happened. So what helped me was my deep relationship with God and the fact that online, you know, churches are available. You can listen to a lot of messages here and there. And then I had I had friendship, like Sister Jewel, I've known her for over, Jewel, how many years have we known each other? Maybe 10 years, I don't know, maybe 10 years probably 10, 11, 12 years. I'm not very sure. But having someone, if you don't have a chance to go to church, having someone that, you know, you've, your, your relationship is built on Christ really helps. Because every time I was down, when I, I would call her, she's the one to, you know, uplift my spirit. And when she was down, she would call me. And, you know, we did it for each other, vice versa. So I would say that that was what really helped me. And I used to, usually here, they have a Ramadan fast. And when they are fasting, and praying to their God, I also use that same time to fast and pray to my God. Mm. That was what I was doing, mm. you know, and that really helped me. So everybody knew me in the company. You know, I worked in a place whereby there were about 150 staff and I was the only Christian. Can you imagine? Ooh, there were lots no, of I people can't. in the place. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You won't even find someone that when you talk about Christ, like they understand what you are saying. They all say they are Christians, they are Catholics, but they don't understand the relationship with God because they come from there. And most of them are Filipinos, you know, this Asian. They come from their countries knowing God well, according to whatever relationship they have. Some of them had turned into lesbians. I met girls who came with, they had husbands back home and they had changed, turned into lesbians. You know, their whole lifestyle had changed because UAE is, is a country whereby if you work hard with your strength, you are going to grow up the ladder. You know, you're going to, if you have a vision for yourself, whatever it is. So you don't really need to pray to have money. If you work hard, yeah. you will get it. So most of the girls had lost their relationship with God. So everybody knew me in that company that I had a relationship with God. And when we had any type of gathering, they would call, ah, Miss Nana, call Nana. She was the one to pray. You know, they will call me. Okay. When is that time? They'll call me. Everybody knew. They'll call me and, you know, I'll be the one to pray. But I, I would say that, it was quite tough because you will go to work and let's say something happens. You guys are having a, you know, discussion or something. You are trying to explain something to somebody which is related to Christ and they don't understand it. And they say they are Christians. Yeah. And you are sitting there, okay, sometimes you want to, you know, discuss certain scriptures and they don't understand. It. And the other ones going for mass, they go to, they have some time, they go to mass, they go to this, this, whatever it is that is happening in their church. And I, it was a bit mind boggling. You know, I, I I couldn't understand it because how can I work in a place with so many? And so because of that, there was so much eye on me. Like everybody, you know, when I say I in terms of the demonic world. So I always had to be spiritually alert. There are times God would just throw me into a fast just to be spiritually alert. Because whilst you are working with people who are into Hinduism, Buddhism, those who believe in black magic, I've met girls who whose grandparents and parents deal in black magic. And that's what they used to grow up the ladder in workplaces. Yeah. You know, so you have to be very, you have to have a deep relationship with God. And that's one thing I thank God for that. Wherever I have worked, I have left that mark. Everybody knows Nana is a Christian. You know, they know I'm always talking about God. When I have my five meetings with my staff, at least five minutes of the time, we have to talk about God before I continue with what we have for the day. Mm -hmm. And and having also a relationship back home, having one or two friends. I had some friends that I knew from Bible school. So these friends also really helped me at certain strategic points in my life. There are times I'll be so down, you know, you need somebody to pray with who can encourage you. It really helped. It really helped. But I would always say, before you travel out of Ghana, pray into your traveling. I mean, the way you took time, six months, three months, whatever, to prepare your documents, take that time and pray about your journey, the friends, the community, the place you are going. Pray into it because you don't know what you are going to meet there. And I will tell you, I brought you, like now I can say, I'm not happy about it, but my big sister was somebody when we were growing up, eh, she was the one going to church. Eh, every Sunday, no, see, I sorry them. You know, she's yeah. going for choir practice here and there. And now she's in America. She's not a Christian. She tells me there are so many ways to Christ. And it bleeds my heart. You know, it bleeds my heart. She's gone off the radar, totally off. 
And she was the one who was so much into church when we were young. Those days, Nasi had a in We were not even going to church that much because my mom was not available at that time and my father didn't have time. So when we have time, yeah, we go. We didn't have that much of a relationship with God. But as she traveled out of Ghana over how many years now, she's lost her relationship. She said, yes, there's God, but Christ is not the only way. Hmm. There's God hmm. and Christ. So when you are moving out of Ghana and your relationship is not deeply rooted and you pray into your like i always say like i always advise my friends or whoever wants to travel come to uae or wherever pray about your journey like pray into it because some circumstances will draw you away from god if you are not careful i've seen a lot of things it will draw you i mean girls were wearing certain charms on their hand if you ask them she will tell you this one is for my protection for this this is for that they'll go for vacation and i've seen a lot of things they'll go for vacation and come they have weird weird things on their hands and their feet and these girls were catholics eh? And if you ask them, she will tell you, this is my protection. So before you travel, pray. Hmm. pray. Even the money that you receive at your salary, wherever you work, you need to pray on it. Here, especially in this country, they always say they have done something on, the, on their currency. You know, they've made the currency in such a way, when you get the currency, you have to spend it all in this country. You know what I mean? So before you travel, you have to make yeah. sure your relationship is quite deeply rooted, have certain communities. It took me a long while. It's only this year that I found a Pentecost church where we moved to, which is very close to my house that I attend. Maybe I started attending it maybe four or five months now. But if I didn't have a strong relationship with God before I traveled, maybe I would, I would have been somewhere else. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And a community like, you know, Josh, he led me to this community, which has really helped my marriage because I was about to divorce. I was on the way going. <laughs> I was... You know, Praise one of my letters already out. So, yes, this is just my little, everybody, before you move out, wherever you are traveling to, whatever you have to do, you need to really pray about the journey, pray about your friends, the community, where you are going, the kind of work. It's very important. And don't lose that relationship you have with God, regardless of how, whatever stress may come, because I know here, outside of Ghana, there's so much stress, especially with the work. Sometimes it takes so much of your time. You don't even have the energy to wake up and pray. But you need to learn how to pray in tongues whilst you are on your break time. You need to learn how to pray in tongues whilst there's no, no one to serve. If you are in customer service, whatever job you are doing. So that's what I do. And then my friends, my colleagues will be asking me, Miss Nana, you pray. I'm like, yeah. Whatever opportunity, whatever time I have, I blow the tongues just to make sure I'm, I'm you know, connected. Sometimes God will take me out of certain jobs so that he can have certain time, some time with me to keep me rooted and then launch me out again. That's what has been happening to me here in UAE. He would, if he realizes that the job is taking my time and I cannot spend time with him, he takes me off, you know, ground me and then pushes me out there again. So I just, that is just my little uh, token I just wanted to share. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Nanepia. God bless you. God bless you. And as you shared, um, you shared a lot, but what I also, one of the things I picked out of it is that a lack of community can let you completely lose it as well based on the instances that you gave and, and we thank god that we are conscious of that even as we go on sister fiona you will be our last speaker for the day and uh, then we would round up so i'll try try and keep it very short um so in my in my situation um although i was born in the uk i grew up in ghana and my reason for moving back to the UK was predominantly to go to law school. And the plan was just to go back to Ghana, you know, or let's see how it goes kind of thing. I didn't have any like fixed thoughts or anything um, because, you know, at the end of the day, um, I could either stay or I could go back. And, <laughs> and how it all played out was that when I came, I stayed in London just for a short while. And I've shared, I've shared a story about, you know, how one day I spent the day crying on the bus because, you know, the people were a bit mean, like my family members, some of them, you know, the kind of bond I thought would have, or what we had was a little bit mm -hmm. iffy or, or dodgy when, um, I came to stay with them they were just a bit cold um so I, I found a church in London but then you know I wasn't going to go to uni in London um I was going to uni in Canterbury Kent so um I went to Kent um and in this situation well my my situation is a bit unique because I had a degree already in Ghana when I went back to do another undergraduate degree this time in law 
um I, I i was jumped straight into the second year so i didn't start like in the first year i went straight mm -hmm. to second year. um and it, this was a very special program where like you know most people would would come in if they have a degree and my cohort the people i sat in class with were well everybody in fact was from canada so it was mm -hmm. a feeling of okay i have a community but then it really felt temporary so i made friends with this you know one of my very good friends her name is mavis and um, she was ghanaian so how delighted i was but then she was from canada so i formed this lovely community but then all my classmates moved back to canada so again it, it felt lonely so i i was in a very unique situation where i really felt like an alien um, so although you're born here, but you didn't really feel like you belonged. I don't know if it makes sense. And then what made things, well, so I, I wasn't really going to church in uni. Then this, my friend Mavis was like, oh, why don't you come to my church? You know, I wasn't really staying on campus because of, you know, campus to stay on campus was quite expensive. So I found a, a house, which was about 30 minutes away. So I'd rather trek. And, you know, so in, in this house, I had friends, but then they were from a different u university. There was another university in Canterbury called Christchurch. So that's where they were in. Um, and then, you know, so I, I'm in a house with them, but we're not in the same uni. And then I'll commute to school where I'll meet the people in my class who also would go back to Canada. So it was very weird. Um, so that was my short, you know, term community. So I'm still friends with some of my housemates. I'm still friends with those who moved back to Canada. Um, but then what made things a little bit better was, you know, oh, again, my grandma died, my paternal grandmother, she died. And I remember my dad called me and, and gave me the news. And I was in university, but I was like, oh, whose shoulder am I going to cry on right now? <laughs> there was no one. There was really no one. I had like two friends from my class. But, you know, it was still, you know, you, I still didn't, it was, the, the type of crying I wanted to cry, you know, I had to still go home, you know. So I remember I I jumped on the bus <laughs> and I called one of my one of my classmates um, that I went to Rich Church and Motown with. Um, and I remember when I called her, she was she was she was somehow busy. So she was like, oh, I'll call you back. And then I realized that I really don't have anyone to cry to, you know. So I was just crying on the bus. The tears was coming. I'm not, well, I, I keep crying on the bus. So <laughs> this is the second time. Um, so the tears kept flowing. I was like, I really don't have anyone, you know. Um, and then, well, I ended up going to the funeral in Ghana. And that was where my mother-in-law, <laughs> at the time I wasn't married, she she came. She, she, she was a family friend. And she was like, oh, I didn't realize you had moved to the UK. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm here. Oh, hmm. And she was like, okay, give me your number. I'll give it to the children. She had four children. And then hopefully they'll get in touch with you. Out of the four, one got in touch with me. Um, and then he kept visiting. Uh -huh. He kept visiting me. <laughs> that, was, that was how I started building community. He kept visiting me. And one thing led to the other. And then by the time I realized um, we were married, um, and then obviously then we started to to build community together. Um, so we we moved down to Buckinghamshire. We found a church. One of the churches we found um um well they it was a lovely place they were having it in holiday in when we got there they served us burgers why won't you stay i stayed there <laughs> and then yeah and then when covid hit i then went into isolation again I've, even after covid i still wasn't you know i was i don't know i just didn't like to go out anymore um, and then somewhere at the end of last year uh, you know god spoke to me he was like go to this church so i went there and that's where we are now. The kids love it. We, you know, we've we've stayed and we are happy there. So yeah, community is very important. There were there were moments I felt lonely, but then God God made a way in the end. So thanks. I, I thought it was short enough. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Fiona. That is one solid community that you built over there. And it's still a community. God bless you for sharing. Thank you so much, my dear sisters. And um, I'm really grateful for each one of us and for sharing so much, you know, sisters. Um, I know that none of us takes it for granted that we share like the way we do here on CWW. Um, I'll pray thanking God for the lives of all of you and for my sisters who shared. And I feel the prompt to ask Sister Mercy Dawn. I saw her a while ago. Um, yeah, so when I, I pray, after I pray, Sister Mercy Dawn would pray um, using Sister Nanakia's sister as a point of contact for anybody who has gone abroad and has, um, you know, kind of shifted a little away from their faith. So Sister Mercy, please get ready for that as the Lord leads you whilst I pray for our sisters. So yes, I'll please. turn my video off whilst, whilst, thank you sis, whilst we pray, please. 
Father, I thank you so much for, for this time. Um, I thank you so much for, for leading this session and for having our sisters open up and share like this. I thank you for all my sisters who are on here, for those who will listen later, and for my brothers too. But I thank you specifically for Sister Emily, Sister Joyce, Sister Viv, Sister Rosie, Sister Rita, Sister Nanaya, Sister Koride, Sister Nanekwe, and Sister Fiona, who you used to share with us this evening. Father, it is all your work through our sisters. And so we want to thank them for, thank you for their lives because it was you at work. And we are very grateful for all the sharing. It is my prayer on behalf of my sisters and I that you continue to open us up to the various ways in which you want us to lead our lives, the things you want us to avoid, the paths you want us to take. Just lead us, sweet Holy Spirit. You dwell in us. You dwell in us and we are available for your use. We are available for kingdom use. We are available, Lord, for your good work. And we thank you that each one of our sisters who you used to share today, today and the stories that they shared will go a long way to bless others who will listen later. May your name be praised, dear Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, have I prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. This is the message, please, the floor is yours. Amen. And so, Father, we are so thankful, Lord, for the testimonies we have heard. And we are thankful even for siblings of God who may have gone astray one way or the other. I want to use a Stadanukia sister as a point of contact. Lord, you have done it for me. And I testify for your for into your glory. As you did it for Paul, I pray for every sibling, oh God, that has not come to your saving knowledge yet. The Holy Ghost, you will convict, you will draw your sons and your daughters by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let every scale fall of their eyes. Let every deception be broken in the name of Jesus. And let the light of Christ Jesus be shed forth abroad in their hearts. I pray the fear of God, which is the beginning of wisdom, even right now to arrest every soul, every heart, every mind that has gone astray. May the world strangely grow dim in the light of your glory and grace. Let your light, O God, shed forth brightly, O God, even in their hearts. As Lord, you encountered Saul of Tarsus on the way to Damascus. I pray for an individual encounter for these ones right now, wherever they may be in the name of Jesus. That Lord, their faith, O God, will be strengthened from grace to grace, from glory to glory. That their lives, O God, will be testimonies, O God, that will draw even many more family, family members to yourself by the power of the Holy Spirit. We thank you that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we can ask or even imagine. And so we thank you, O God, that you do this so your name is exalted, so your name is glorified. We thank you for hearing us. And we thank you, O God, for the testimonies, O God, of many siblings coming to your saving knowledge, living abroad. And, and somehow thought we thought that they had lost it, but have found you now. And thank you that, Lord, when we find, if when you find us, Lord Jesus, your word says that we receive freedom that comes from you to live in accordance to your will and, and, and in, your, in, the, in the light of your word. I pray for, for, for an, I mean, a testimony that will just overwhelm each of us. How, how you do it, Lord, it amazes us. And I have seen you do it. And I testify to your glory. Do it even exceedingly abundantly above what you did for me so that your daughters will be encouraged in their walk with you. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. Him who the Son shall set free is indeed free. Thank you that, Lord, you set us free, and we are free indeed. We give you praise for this wo a wonderful miracle that you have done in the lives of siblings for your honor and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Mercy. God bless you. And um, my dear sisters, as, as week in, week out, we share on the mind of Christ. If you are led by the Holy Spirit to come and share anything with us, please reach out. Um, you may not know what the topic